Welcome to the BitConnect YouTube channel coming up in today's video. BitConnect Limited Texas Cease and Desist Letter. Hello everyone, I'm Roy Murphy. Welcome back to the BitConnect YouTube channel. Uh, I'm making this video in response to various emails I've had and there's a few YouTube videos coming up about it, people asking lots of questions and I know how this works guys. If I don't address this straight away then the Fudsters and the whole FUD machine will start doing its vicious attack on BitConnect, as they always do. Because there's always something, there's always something in the media, always something in the news where people misrepresent what they say. So I've done a little bit of research on this. I was going to make a video about two hours ago and I reached out to a few lawyers um, in the UK. Now it's very early in the morning here, it's now 3 a.m. Uh, but I did reach out to a friend of mine in Japan to maybe give me some insight, bearing in mind that this is a US specific issue. Now, what I want to, I don't want to go through everything because this is quite a lengthy uh, document, but this is from the Texas State Securities Board. So this is the subdivision of the SEC. This is the regional representation. This is specifically only for Texas and this is specifically only in the US. But this is a cease and desist order that has been uh, publicized in an open letter to BitConnect at the Panorama Park Street, Ashford, England, care of Companies Made Simple Limited. Now, what they're referencing here is the original placeholder for BitConnect Limited, which is no longer in existence. This is, um, this is a placeholder company that was set up before the BitConnect ICO um, at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, in order for the ICO process to go through and for there to be a legitimate uh, postal address, office, uh, etc., etc. So lots of people over the last four or five months keep referencing that company as BitConnect and it just isn't. Um, if I go over here, I can show you that um, some of the international promoters, bear in mind that BitConnect International PLC, which is the company that you should be looking at, um, isn't actually BitConnect the platform. This is a list of, of international BitConnect promoters who have collaborated to form a single entity company for tax reasons. It's as simple as that. It, it doesn't actually represent uh, a, a distributed system because it's, it's an autonomous entity. So these, uh, this company, which is the actual official company for BitConnect, people asking about the limited company accounts and how the company was going to be closed down. The company was wound up in November um, due to, uh, that was in 2017. So as you can see that on 6th of September 2017 that all the accounts have been made uh, up to the 6th of March 2019. So everything tax-wise with BitConnect is perfectly okay. This is the limited company for it. But let's go back to this document here. So. Like I said, I reached out to some attorneys, some people that I know. I didn't want to speak to some of the barristers that I know. Number one, I wanted to address this pretty quickly before the Fudsters came out and started taking their spin on it. And two, um, everyone's asleep here in the UK because it's stupid o'clock in the morning. So I reached out uh, to another friend of mine. Now I mentioned him in, I think it was my third or fourth video, uh, called The End of the Dollar. His name is Mikari Kashima. Now, Mikari is the division chief of uh, financial infrastructure division for the Bank of Japan. Okay, so he has a very, very high up senior position. Previously to that, he was the senior consulting counsel for the IMF. This is the International Monetary Fund. And he was based at 1900 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. So he was two blocks away from the White House. Previously, he was uh, a former White House attorney. And I haven't seen him in a number of years until recently at the Blockchain Summit in London where he was giving a talk. He is very, very active in blockchain technology. He knows the financial uh, infrastructure in the United States because he worked for them for 17 years. And he also is a big advocate for Japan and the legal and financial systems adopting uh, mining, blockchain technology for different infrastructures and uh, different banking systems in Japan. So this guy knows his stuff. If whatever he says, I take his gospel. So I sent him this and said, uh, please, can you help? Can you make sense of this for me? I, I have an informed opinion based on everything that I know, but I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know the US tax system. I don't know the SEC rules. Um, I'm not an American. 
you know, uh, could you please give me some guidance? So his feedback was the SEC regulates ICOs. It's one of the new things coming out of the industry in 2017, but DAOs are exempt. As far as the SEC regulations go, that DOEs are exempt, uh, sorry, DAOs are exempt. So a DAO is a distributed autonomous organization. So uh, DAO regulation for solicitation and advice is now defined at state level in the United States of America. DAOs are exempt from SEC regulations and in every country in the world actually, bar none, but exchanges and securities as defined as an asset for trading as a stock is governed in the United States of America on a state by state basis. Okay, this is what he told me. This is why futures markets for Bitcoin was approved by the SEC because they are hedging on Bitcoin's price and exchanges controlled by the SEC, amongst others. Okay, so what Mikari asked me to do was to scroll down. Now you can download this. It's on the uh, ssbtexas.gov website if you need to. Now, this doesn't actually pertain to BitConnect at all because it's the wrong address. To enforce it, it has to be given to a director of the company. Now, all of the directors of BitConnect are actually the, the senior nationals and international and continental promoters. So it's not even relevant in this case. But seeing as I can just imagine how much FUD that this will create because I remember the previous issue where people got the wrong end of the stick about the whole limited company situation. And that just carried on for three, four months. Uh, it gave me no end of emails and YouTube responses, which even I still respond to today. So it hasn't even ended now. People still see this and I see this as a non-issue. So um, to stop that in its tracks, I want to actually go through and just carry on anyway. So if you go through the whole of this here, it says about the finding of facts and the BitConnect lending program. It actually does a really good job of actually defining what BitConnect does. Um, <laughs> maybe we should copy some of this stuff. Uh, but most of this is actually copied from the BitConnect website as detailing what BitConnect does, uh, about how, how the investment platform works, how staking works, how the proof of concept is. They've added this for the initial coin offering of BitConnect X, which apparently is an issue. Uh, if you want to launch an ICO in the state of Texas, uh, then they've said that the uh, the ICO will not be ratified in the state of Texas. It doesn't mean you can't do anything if you're in the state of Texas. It just means you can't have operations based in the state of Texas. So um, you have to be very specific about how you understand the wording because, again, you know, my English is pretty good, but when you talk lawyers talk and financial talk, things can be misrepresented and they just talk gobbledygook half the time. So... Um, I need to scroll down to this area here. So it's to do with fraud in connection with the offer of investments in the BitConnect lending platform. So what they're saying is, is that these issues here from number 40 down to clause I could be perceived in the terms of the regulations from each state under the guise of the SEC as potentially being licensable for registration because of the possibility that fraud may occur. So let me read this to you. Clause 40, in connection with the offer of investments in the BitConnect lending program, respondent BitConnect is intentionally failing to disclose the identity and qualifications of the persons that developed and controlled the BitConnect trading bot and volatility software. And the intentional failure to disclose this information constitutes the intentional failure to disclose material facts. So what they're asking here is, if anybody wants to do anything in the state of Texas that is encompassed by this statement here, they require the state of Texas to be able to authenticate and ratify that there are KYC regulations intact so that they can track everything. Clause 41. Respondent BitConnect is representing the BitConnect lending program as a safe way to earn a high rate of return on your investment without having to undergo a significant amount of risk which is misrepresentation of a relevant fact because respondent BitConnect acknowledges significant risks associated with virtual currencies as well as the BitConnect lending program, including but not limited to the following uh, legislative and regulatory changes or actions of the state, federal or international. <laughs> See, this is my inbox blowing up. Texas lawsuits. This is uh, 20 emails I've had. So this is why I'm addressing this video right now. Uh, transactions in virtual currency such as Bitcoin are irreversible and accidental transactions may not be recoverable. Oh my goodness me. 
people who are financially free and sovereign having to take responsibility themselves for sending it to the wrong address. Fancy that. Oh, weird. Clause C, the volatility and unpredictability of the price of virtual currency relative to the fiat currency may result in significant loss over short periods. So the government of the United States must track everything you're doing and making sure you pay your taxes. Any technological difficulties experienced by the BitConnect system may prevent the access or use of members' virtual currency temporarily or permanently depending on the severity of damage. There are risks associated with the trading and investing. If there should be a system failure, hacking incident or technical failure, these terms apply to the members. Members should note that there is no guarantee of daily profit or lending. Well, that is black and white on the website anyway. BitConnect reserves the right to institute and implement new rules of paying interest and capital should BitConnect lending fail in any way. Well, that isn't the case at the moment because uh, the KYC regulations came in in December 2017, which prevents that from happening. And that is SEC regulated. Come on, guys, keep up. BitConnect reserves the right to change the lending algorithm and interest payments and capital back system. And there is no guarantee of invested capital if the lending system fails due to any of the reasons mentioned above. And it carries on and carries on and it defines materially misleading and deceptive statements about how BitConnect uh, works and how merchant vendors and other parties may decline to accept virtual currencies such as BitConnect coins. And if you want to do that, then you have to go through a central exchange monitored and ratified by the SEC. So there is a BitConnect ban on DOAs in the state of Texas until they reveal auditable accounts of their transactions and perform KYC regulations. So KYC regulations have been in effect since December on the BitConnect platform. This is a regional issue. This is a misrepresentation of the rules. And this is because each individual state has been given the authority to decipher what they think about DAOs because there is no governmental ratifiable precedent on how to deal with things like BitConnect. The long and short of it is, is that it's only classed as a security if you are trading in the fiat currency. Now, BitConnect has always been and will always be a crypto to crypto exchange. It is not ratifiable. The SEC does not, so far as their jurisdiction comes, it, it doesn't come under that jurisdiction. But because they don't know what to do with it, they're just saying, well, we do not allow anyone who wants to open an exchange in the state of Texas to be able to audit, manipulate, become part of a system that isn't regulatable by the state of Texas. So if we go over now to the terms of conditions, when you sign up to BitConnect, it is very, very clearly stated uh, in the terms of service that there is a no solicitation or advice clause. I'm going to read this to you. I know you can read it yourself, but I want to make this absolutely undeniably fact. This has always been on here. If you go back to one of Jedi Knight's very early videos, you will see that the very first video he did, it was on the uh, terms of service for BitConnect. And he actually covered the no solicitation or advice area and all the risk disclosure areas of the terms of service of you uh, getting into a contract with BitConnect. So it says, neither this website nor any of its content shall constitute a recommendation, solicitation or offer to buy or sell any securities, assets or any other financial instruments or provide any investment advice or service. That goes without doubt. That is a fact. The information contained in this site has been prepared without reference to any particular user's investment requirements or financial situation. The information and services provided on the site are not provided to any person or entity in any jurisdiction where the provision or use or thereof would be contrary to applicable laws, rules or regulations of any governmental authority. You acknowledge that you are not relying on the BitConnect or any of its affiliates or consultants in making an investment decision. Always consider seeking the advice of a qualified professional before making decisions regarding your business and or investments. BitConnect does not endorse any investment or shall not be responsible in any way for any transactions you enter into with the members. You agree that the BitConnect and its affiliates or consultants will not be liable for any loss or damages or any sort of incurred as a result of interactions between you and BitConnect members. BitConnect members, guys, this is a peer-to-peer -peer lending program. When you trade, which is the only issue that the SEC has 
or subdivisions of um, of anybody else, uh, any other country or or state. It's peer to peer. It is not regulatable. And those that don't know what to do with these uh, DAO systems will just do a blanket ban and say, do you know what? Until we understand, until we get guidance from the SEC about what to do with institutions and platforms like BitConnect, it's not just BitConnect. I mean, the Texas state, you know, the, the SEC actually did exactly the same thing for US iTech. And um, that was a hoo-ha for about a week and then it just died off and then nobody cared and nothing happened. And the same will happen with BitConnect as well. For this fact that they've got the wrong company, the wrong limited address, and the fact that there are no operations that occur specifically in Texas. So I hope that will stop any of the FUD. I imagine it probably won't because people, I know the people who will be making videos on this already. It's the usual fools. Don't fall for it, guys. Um, if you want to, then just send them a link to this video and uh, we can all get on with our days. Talking of which, getting on, uh, we're now four days away from the BitConnect X launch. I hope you're ready for it. There is a live stream on this website on midnight. We'll start off about 10 to midnight on the night of the 9th or the morning of the 10th. Uh, work out your own times based on your own time zones. And also don't forget, talking of Jedi Knight, I'm doing a live stream. We're doing a podcast with uh, Jedi Knight on the 13th of January. I didn't give the time in my last video. It's 3 p.m. UK time. I think that's 10 a.m. on Saturday the 13th. That is uh, Eastern Standard Time. So, till then, I'm Roy Murphy. You've been watching the BitConnect YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next video.